All right, everyone, and welcome to our first premiere challenge of the new season. My name is Shang, and joining me on stream will be Matt to bring you the top cut of this premiere challenge here today. All right, so players have played through six rounds of Swiss in the very first PC of the new season. And being the first PC of the new season, the players have come out in force. We're actually the very first elevated PC in the world for the 2017 season. Yeah, and uh, on stream, well, it was a best of one PC, so you know, a break of all, from all the best of three tournaments that we've been having uh, since nationals and regionals, basically. So, uh, interestingly, to see a lot of people busting out some more interesting technology for best of one uh, Swiss, but will that carry on to best of three top cut? We shall see. Yes, we see the two players who will be featured in our top eight match, Wei Wen and Benjamin, busting out pretty similar teams and pretty standard looking teams as well. The key difference here being that uh, Benjamin actually carrying the Cresselia uh, and not the Kangaskhan, while Wei Wen actually has the Weavile over the Salamence. Yeah, so Wei Wen on paper has Weavile to beat both the Salamence and the Cresselia. So Wei Wen looks like he has a very strong Weavile lead option. He has to be careful of um, Talonflame though, which is always going to cause Weavile problems. Uh, having used Weavile quite a bit myself, Talonflame in team preview always makes me think twice about bringing Weave out to the game. As we do see Wei Wen lead with Kangaskhan and Xerneas. And Smeargle Xerneas coming out from Benjamin instead. So... Probably two of the most common leads we've seen throughout the entire season and we're, we're about to see why. Yeah, definitely the two best Pokemon to set up your own Xerneas. And on paper, you think Weiwen does have the lead matchup with Kangaskhan able to fake out the Smeargle. But having fought Benjamin, I think you kind of know what the Smeargle does carry. Yeah, I did uh, play against Benjamin in Swiss, so um, Weiwen might be in for a really nasty surprise here if he's not expecting what's going to come. And he has Mega Evolved, so if he has Inner Focus, he's no longer in play. So oh. Kangaskhan actually going for the fake out first, onto Xerneas. So Weiwen making a gesture there, not the play he wanted to get as Smeargle is scarfed and goes for the Dark Void. Dark Void does go off, he's going to hit at least one of Weiwen's Pokemon. And it's going to oh, avoid the Zarnia. Oh, but the voice, that is huge! You expect Weiwen to be going for the Geomancy here, which he does. That is a massive, massive avoid. If that hit the Kangaskhan even, uh, I mean, if it hit the Xerneas but missed the Kangaskhan, it still would have been fine for... Uh, for Benjamin here, but missing a Xerneas is huge, and that is one of the roles, dice rolls you play with when you play with Scarf, Smeargle, and Dark Void. Yes, this is exactly the situation we saw in this year's Nationals Finals, with the Scarf, Smeargle missing the Dark Void on the Xerneas, who then went for Geomancy, putting it now faster than the Smeargle, who without a Sash cannot take a Dazzling Gleam. Exactly, although uh, Wayward here is basically forced to press Dazzling Gleam to get the KO on, on Smeargle here, which means a uh, part crit Xerneas will be able to survive and get off its own Geomancy, but at what cost? Yes, yeah, so as you see Xerneas all the way down into the red with 27 hit points remaining as Kangaskhan takes its first turn of sleep. Oh, I'm not entirely... Did we catch uh, which Xerneas is faster on turn 1? Um, I'm pretty sure Fairy Aura triggered first on uh, Wayward's side of the field, as well as uh, Benjamin's uh, Xerneas flinching second after uh, Geomancy went off, so... Oh, that is true. Probably a clear indication that Wei Wen at least has a speed tie if not clearly outspeeds so Yeah, we should have made the previous Dazzling Gleam a pretty safe play since even on this turn, he does have a speed advantage after both Xerneas have gone for Geomancy. Groudon comes in here though and Groudon is the one Pokemon that you do want to rely on when having to deal with opposing Xerneas. Especially if, if you can find the time and space to set up maybe a sword stance. Well, I don't think Weiwen's gonna give Benjamin much opening to go for a Souls Dance. So the question now is, does Benjamin want to go for the risk-free Fire Punch play, which would be thwarted by a Protect from Weiwen, Soul, and Xerneas? Or does he want to go for the Precipice Blades, which comes with its own fair share of risk? Weiwen's Xerneas shows it is faster and gets on the Dazzling Gleam first. It gets quite a good amount of damage off on Groudon, actually. Yeah, not the most, not the bulkiest of Groudon on Benjamin's side of the field. Kangaskhan takes his second turn of sleep, and we should see a Fire Punch coming out, but we do see the Sword Stance basically putting pressure on Wei Wen to target down this route on the next turn. Yeah, Wei Wen going to have to think twice about pressing Dazzling Gleam again, since he's not going to get a KO on this plus 2 route on. But the last Pokemon on uh, Benjamin's side of the field is Salamence, and not the Cresselia that I was perhaps expecting. So, tough here. I mean, even if he gets off a Precipice Blades, Predicting a Dazzling Gleam to take out the Salamence to stop it from getting up a Tailwind. 
Um, Wayman still has two full health Pokemon in the back. If he has either Talonflame or Weavile, or even a faster Groudon, he has the game locked up. Right, so no switches coming up from Wayman. Kanga Scan going to try to wake up after taking two turns of sleep. And, and the yeah. question here is whether Benjamin is going to protect his Salamence. Oh, Definitely no protect comes out. Come out. And that's a big, big gleam. Going to take down the Salamence, drop Kang Groudon down. Does Kangaskhan wake up or get a third turn of sleep here? If Kangaskhan wakes up, game one is over. As and he does nice. wake up. And Double Edge is going to come out and KO that Groudon. Revealing to Benjamin that Wayman's Kangaskhan is back carrying the Double Edge. As Benjamin is left to recoup and hopefully recover for the next game. I want to think twice about the smear goal in game two. Uh, a clean 4-0 there, as you can see. Um, that's how quickly these games can turn south if you miss a critical move in the 2016 metagame. And um, to be fair, Benjamin shouldn't be feeling too bad about that. But at the same time, does he really want to risk playing that 50-50 turn one with the opposing Kangaskhan in game two? Yes, he's, I mean, he did have the right read as we even went for the fake out onto the Xerneas. As we've seen, just that one Dark Void miss, which has, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, Dark Void has a 64% chance of hitting both of um, Wayman's Pokemon. He missed the crucial one there, and letting the opposing Xerneas Geomancy before your own. And, and not to mention that even after he matched the Geomancy, we saw that Benjamin's Xerneas is still slower than Wayman's. So playing the turn one, match the Geomancy play, might not be in Benjamin's favor. Personally, I would like to see Benjamin maybe rely on his Cresselia Groudon endgame a bit more, as that's the difference between him and Wei Wen. Wei Wen showed that he did not, well, we don't know what he brought in the back, but uh, Weavile is usually brought as a lead, so the fact that Wei Wen didn't bring it might indicate that he doesn't feel comfortable bringing it to this matchup, perhaps because of the, sca the Scarf Smeargle. But in that case, uh, without the Weavile, Cresselia has a really good chance of controlling the board position in the end. We game. see no change coming out from Wei Wen. Are we going to see the Cresselia come out for Benjamin as we do? So Benjamin does make the adjustment that Shang suggested, bringing his own Cresselia and not having to face the threat of Wei Wen to Weavile. So the turn one, he does have a very threatening double setup move where he can just pretty much safely go for a Trick Room and a, and a Swords Dance, really, and start putting on pressure on on Wei Wen straight away. Whichever one Wei Wen chooses to fake out, uh, the other will get their free setup turn. Yes, not much Wei Wen can do about it since Cisernius, even after a setup, doesn't really threaten either Cresselia or Groudon. And you don't really want the Geomancy in the face of an opposing trigger room. I think in this case, you're basically forced to fake out the Groudon because, uh, you know, a plus, an unboosted Groudon is still gonna, it's still gonna take some time to take down both of these uh, powerhouse Pokemon on the field right now. Whereas Cressella setting up the Trick Room uh, may not be as detrimental this early in the game. Pick up does come does out. Go up. Onto the Cresselia though, a strange play as Swords Dance. We're probably going to see a Swords Dance come out. We went prioritizing not letting Trick Room go up. So probably hoping to double into the ground on next turn, but then you risk walking right into a Protect and Trick Room. Exactly, so he's kind of created this 50-50 position for himself, which he could have avoided by actually just faking out the ground on here. Um, but we haven't seen what Groudon's gone for yet. Is it the Swords Dance? Yes, it is the Swords Dance, and we do see that Cresselia actually did not go for Trick Room. He exactly. went before the Groudon. Interesting play. Maybe it could have been a Thunder Wave or an Icy Wind. So perhaps Benjamin not carrying the Trick Room option on his Cresselia. And now we're faced with, this, with that board position that we talked about earlier, where it's a 50-50. Does Groudon protect? Groudon does protect. Does protect. We won! With a rather strong reaction there. Did he go for the double onto Cresselia? Moonblast does come out onto the Cresselia, boosted by the Geomancy. Can he take the KO after the chip? All the way down, not even a critical hit there. Right, so Cresselia going all the way down from the Moonblast, and we went ultimately having a pretty safe play, as it turns out. Yeah. Uh, interesting Cresselia set there. I'm not used to seeing Cresselia's go down from that health range to a plus two Moonblast. But Smeargle here gonna take the field for Benjamin. Uh, I'm gonna enjoy facing the plus two if speed it, zone, yes. It does have, if it does have the transform, it could be really interesting mind game. It's right here, though. Uh... As Zernius going to go Oh, Benjamin reacts as he go for the transform. As Smeargle does transform into the opposing Xerneas. But Kangaskhan has not moved yet. Double edge gonna come out. Gonna hit onto a Groudon. Gets a free transform there. Benjamin getting his 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 way back into this game. Are we gonna see a Source Dance as well? No, it's gonna be Precipice Blade. And it is going to land on Kangaskhan. 
all the way down though, so much damage. That is an interesting amount of damage actually. I'm not used to seeing Kangas Kangas get taken out. Oh wait, it's Source Dance, it's her first turn. Yeah, that's why. Oh right. Yeah. yeah. Apologies, we forgot that Groudon has Sword Dance in the face of this amazing transform play that Benjamin has just pulled off. That's the thing about Scarf Smeargle as well, like it gives you that way back into the game against opposing Xerneas just by having that threat of the dual threat of fake out and transform. Now Weyburn, I do know for a fact, is carrying the Jolly Groudon. So he's gonna probably outspeed Benjamin's. In Moonblast comes out, no special attack drop onto Weyburn's Xerneas. As Moonblast comes out onto Benjamin's own not going to get the KO, but the opposing Groudon gets Lens the precipice blade. Double hit. Big, big hit there. All from the way down for Groudon. The way down. And the handshake is extended as Weiwen will move on to the top four of this premier challenge. A very, very fast, fast paced set there. We've either player not really taking the time to protect any of their Pokemon. We've in fact, in fact, as we saw, the players who did protect oops, ended up getting punished for the protects. I think the problem here is that. Because of the dual threat of opposing uh, Groudons and Xerneas having the Geomancy and the um, Swords Dance setups, th that it's highly risky to actually go for Protects and let your opponent set up even more. So in that case, uh, going for the attack, especially Wei Wen, who knew that he did have the speed advantage in most of the situations, uh, you know, th th that there's no reason, real reason for him to protect. Uh, Benjamin, you know, made the appropriate adjustment there, but uh, unfortunate, a bit unfortunate, I guess, with maybe the kind of sets he was running on his Pokemon, not able to capitalize on, uh, you know, the early Cresselia lead. Yeah, he did have the chance there. He did get his Toss Dance up, but was unable to really take advantage of it. We went, as we saw, played really safe, but because Cresselia wasn't exactly the Valkyrie's Cresselia, he couldn't take a Moonblast, and we went, ended up with a very safe play, take out the Cresselia and cover the Groudon with the Double Edge. So Weyuan will move on to the top four, where I believe he will be playing the winner of Brian and... Amiru? No, Brian and Yujun, actually. Oh, okay, interesting. Now by Weyuan, who won the top eight set that we just saw on stream against Benjamin Tan. So first off, congratulations, Weyuan. Thank you, Matthew. So I think you were... You were pretty much had your heart in your, heart in your throat when the <laughs> first turn went off and you saw the pick-up went off. Without him picking out your own, yeah, I was, like, I was like, okay, I, I think I'm gonna expect maybe a fake out or something. So I went for fake out, and then I see Kangaskhan, I was like, oh no. <laughs> then Dark Void came out, but thankfully it missed the Zanias. Yeah, the crucial miss there for Geomancy, which pretty much it gave you so much momentum that it was pretty hard, very hard for him to catch you after that turn one. Yes. But in game two, I think we saw it go a bit more back and forth. Yeah, game two was um, I just, a bit. Me, actually one of the crucial turns was me predicting him protect his Groudon and going for the trick room on his Cresselia. Yep. And I think the other thing there is that he did make the adjustment in game 2 to bring Cresselia and Groudon straight off. Did you think that maybe he would do that and maybe it would be a good choice to bring your own Weavile? Uh, for me, actually the reason I put Weavile as my team is I only bring it if I see Ryoga teams. Because it, my um, Weavile, it's, it's, it won't do enough damage I would say. So, and then you prob the Cressilla probably would still get the trick room off. Yes, that's true. So, I brought um, Kenga and Xerneas again in the game too because I felt it was the most comfortable thing I could bring against his team. Yeah, because you probably figured that he would be scared out of bringing Smeggle again yeah. for a lead, which would make Kanga's and Xerneas even better for you in terms of setting up your Geomancy. For game two, I thought he was gonna. There was a few places I think I was thinking he could make. He could protect the Groudon and go for Trick Room straight away. Yes. Or I didn't know whether he had Helping Hand, so he could even worse go for Helping Hand and a pre bit. Then, then the world would have ended there. Yeah, because you didn't really know what his Cressida set had yeah. beforehand. Thankfully, he's not sure what his Cressida went for on that turn one, but he got the Swords Dance up on the Groudon. That's true. And it turned out that his Cressida perhaps wasn't the bulkiest on a special side as yeah. well. Going down pretty much directly to a plus two moon blast. Yeah, I was expecting to bring it down to the red and then take care of double actually. Yeah, that's why you double into that slot, but yeah. in the end, it worked out. Yeah. So, as then, well, what, what, were your, what was your reaction when you actually called your protect and went for the transform? Uh, actually, um, for me, I didn't know what he had fake out back then, so I went for the protect play, worrying in case if he did have fake out because his Groudon was boosted by yes. So if he had fake out Xerneas and then he would probably take out Xerneas. So him getting the transform off wasn't it because it was 
Because I was already Geomancy Boost, so I wouldn't die to his moves unless if he gets a crit or something. And of course, but the problem of course is that he could Moonblast get a special attack drop on your own. Ah, so yeah, yeah. That, that's... Uh, then it'll be... No, it, it'll still be fine because I have Grout... He took down Kenga, then I yes. still have Groudon. I take out the Groudon at P-Base, then it'll be a... Even if I did get a special attack drop, I would done enough damage, enough from my Talon Flame to take care of it. Oh, moment. you had Talon Flame in the back. Yeah, Talon Flame would have cleaned up the game pretty nicely yeah. at that point. All right, so congratulations, Waven. Thank you. Moving on to the top four, I believe you're playing the winner of Brian and Juju. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so good luck with that. Yeah. And we'll be back with our top four set. Stay tuned.